All right, data gateways. Now, if you watch my previous video, I'll put a link up here. You'll know what a data gateway is. If you don't, go ahead and watch previous video. Just as I said, I put a link up there. Um, I'm gonna be installing a data gateway, and what that basically means is that's gonna allow us to use the Power Platform, I feel like, to its you know fullest ability, and that allows us to integrate with our on-site SQL and other databases and other data sources. And by data sources, I mean not just SQL, MongoDB, or Access. You can actually go ahead and actually get data from Excel and other files. It doesn't actually just require a database function. There's actually ODBC connectors and there's other ways to connect in. One of the things that I've actually connected into is a lot of legacy software, you know, that isn't supposed to be connected into, but we've actually managed to actually get ODBC connection in and get it accessed on the data gateway. And why that's important is Power BI, Power Apps, and Microsoft Flows can all use the data gateway as a premium connector all right, as a paid service that allows you to manipulate, manage, or report on all of that data, just as I was talking about in my previous video. So let's go ahead and kind of get this going. Over here on my note, you know, main page on the left-hand side, you'll notice I have it already brought up. I'm going to put this link down in the description below. But as you see, there it is. We're going to go ahead and just click Download Gateway. That's going to go ahead and download our gateway. We'll go ahead and copy it on over. Now, I already have my server up. I'm on my SQL server. Now, you don't always have to install it on your SQL server. It really depends. A lot of times, and I'm going to be, you know, in production environments, I actually try to keep it off of the SQL server or off of the uh, database server just because I don't want any extra cycles or anything that already are having to hit the CPU for database reasons to really have to be brought up by the data gateway. So a lot of times, to be honest, I'll install it usually on a file server or a print server or usually just a server that you know, MPS is another server like a certificate authority or something that's doing radius. Just another server that's got some oomph to it, but not a lot of oomph, and it isn't going to be causing too much issues to the database server or where your data is at. File server is one of my favorite ones. So, but here in my case, I'm going to go ahead and install it actually on my SQL server. I'm just going to keep it plain and simple so I know where it's at. I don't have a lot of data. This is all lab environment. I do have some things we will be pulling from, but I just want to kind of show you guys how that setup process is and what's done to do this. So once I got it over, we already got it downloaded. We're gonna double click it, it's gonna pop up. We'll go ahead and follow through. Now, this is very important right here, all right? Is it an on-premise data gateway for the whole entire company or entity, or is it an on-premise gateway for you? Now, where a lot of things happen is a lot of people end up setting it as a data gateway personal mode, and that's great and all, but that means that only you will be able to access it and at all. And there's actually been times where I've had the on-premise data gateway, the personal mode, or even actually the data gateway up here get installed on someone's laptop or get installed on a desktop, and then they leave for the day or they're not there, and the people are like, why aren't reports working? And as it goes back to, it's because where the data gateway is installed. And that goes back to keep it on the file server, keep it somewhere that it's going to be up 24-7 and it will be accessible. But as I was saying right here, we're going to go ahead and set this up as a recommended. It's going to be the on-premise data gateway. So we're gonna let it go ahead and do its thing right here. And it takes a few seconds to kind of just checks, make sure all the uh, downloads are done and has all the prerequisites. Now that this is up, we're gonna go ahead and click accept here. And this is actually installing it. As, as you see there, I click the install button. Go through this process. Now the next part is actually what I, you know, this whole actual thing is about. And that's actually getting it set up and accessible as a data gateway. So let's go ahead and this may take just a few moments for it to finish. It really doesn't actually take usually that long. A gated data gateway usually takes less than about 15 minutes to set up, if that, with full installation time. Can take longer depending on prerequisites. Uh, if you don't have everything installed and you know, your Windows system is actually not full up to date, it will take time to actually get it all set up and accessible. And I have ran into that plenty of times where .NET Framework is not fully up to date and I can't, you know, I have to schedule downtime because yes, updating .NET Framework does take a restart. Oh, that's fantastic. So let's go ahead and uh, not sure why that popped up, but let's keep moving forward. Sometimes there have been some wonky things. I'm going to go ahead and sign in with my email. Sign in with my email again. And the reason that signing with your email is a major deal is because that actually links the account, basically, and if it's allowed to be a premium connector and if it's allowed to be showed. And 
licensing. That's basically how it applies it. Now, right here is the main major part, and this is actually setting the name of the data gateway. So I'm gonna go ahead and just call this ITS for in the shadow. And then the recovery key, now, this is a major deal because if you want to move or migrate or if you ever have to actually recover your data gateway, it's going to be this key. So just make sure that this key is something that you can easily remember. All right. And that it won't you won't be forgotten because there's been plenty of times where, like I said, people have just kind of thrown this up because they want to figure things out. They end up putting in password one, two, three or one, two, three, four, five, six is a password. And it just ends up not really ever working out. So make sure you put it something, write it down or make sure you remember it. Once that's all set up, go ahead and click configure. As you notice, boom, status. Let's go ahead and it's online. The logic apps and Azure in an analysis service. Yeah, still needs to be set up. I know I had a hard time saying that there, didn't I? It's crazy. <laughs> and then if you notice, we've got ready for Microsoft Flow and Power BI. So to actually check this and make sure that that's actually what's going on, we can actually go ahead and let's get back over to our admin center. And if I actually sign in over here to or power by and then we go up here over to the gear we can actually see right here we've got manage gateways here we go there's our now why is this a good thing is that now we actually have a gateway to go in now what does that mean that means that we can actually go ahead and set up a way to connect into data as you can see right here it says add data sources to this gateway you can go ahead and click that and I'm not gonna add in any data sources actually into this video yet, but as you can tell right here, here are all the different types of data sources that you can add in. And as time goes on, I'm gonna go ahead and be doing different videos on how we can actually access and add in different data sources and what that means and what we can use to actually utilize Power BI and not only Power BI, but flows and Power Apps to actually access on-site data and in other places so i hope this video was informational i hope you guys you know found it as a way to help you figure out how to install a data gateway what it's used for you know what can it do for you if you know it did go ahead and make sure you subscribe by clicking the button down below make sure you click the little bell so you get notified anytime you know new videos come out follow me on twitter i'm on reddit i'm on a bunch of different places uh feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions if you know you want me to look at something i'm always or maybe i didn't you know explain something right maybe i'm not understanding something quite how i should be always happy to learn more always happy to do these videos thank you for all the support guys and as always i'll see you in the lab